Hi friends. Um, this is going to be part of a clean tack and talk video. I only have 15 minutes before my online lecture for today. I'm in pathology online right now. Um, but I have been saying I was going to clean my tack and do a video for, oh, I don't know, two weeks. I haven't done it, so I'm at least going to start, um, and we'll go from there. So I wanted to chat about how I got into vet school, I suppose, my journey to vet school. Um, maybe the 15 minutes will help me stay concise, because I'm not a very concise person. It's something I'm working on. So I wanted to be a vet since I was six years old. Pretty classic story. Um, however, I think in undergrad, I always just sort of thought it was inevitable. I didn't really get how hard it would be <laughs> to get into vet school. So I did a animal science, animal biology undergrad degree at UF. Um, and then I applied in my senior year of undergrad for vet school. I applied for like eight vet schools. Um, because at the time I didn't really care where I went. I just said I would go like anywhere that took me. Um, and I totally like procrastinated on the application. Um, I'm also a big procrastinator. Um, and my essays were okay. At looking back, not great. Um, long story short, didn't get in anywhere. Applied to eight schools, didn't get in anywhere, straight out of undergrad. Um, and that was a slap in the face. Like I was like, oh, apparently this is not gonna be easy at all. Um, you, to me now, I'm like, how does someone not know that it's really difficult to get into vet school? But I will say, I mean, this was like 2013. So this was seven years ago at this point. Um, the stuff about getting into vet school and how hard it was, to me at least, like my resources, I, I didn't have that, as much information as I do now and as I think is available now. Um, hence why I'm making more resources saying that it's really hard to get into vet school. So anyway, I tried to get in, um, didn't get in. I had started working as a vet tech uh, near the end of my undergrad uh, year. I pretty much did full, did school, mostly full-time. Um, I had a couple of extracurriculars. Um, I did livestock judging, stuff like that, like while I was in school. Um, but I did get a job as a vet tech, I think in my like junior year of undergrad. Um, yeah, and so didn't get in. And then I graduated from undergrad, um, continued working as a vet tech. And then I basically just applied again. I didn't change a whole lot. I got another year of experience under my belt as a vet tech. That was super helpful. Um, learned more about, you know, what I wanted to do. I think one of my issues there with that second application, which spoiler alert, didn't get in, um, was that I said I wanted to be an equine veterinarian. So I initially, for most of my life, said I want to be a horse vet. That's what I want to do. Um, all I had was small animal vet tech experience. Sure, I've ridden horses for 20 something years at that point, um, but I didn't really have any equine veterinary experience. And so I think that was part of the problem. And a, a doctor that I know actually pointed that out to me later on was, hey, you say that you wanna be an equine vet, but you're not, like you haven't proven that. And so I think that's a really good point is you have to prove what you say in your application. You can't just say like, I'm gonna be the best like rabbit vet ever but you have no provable experience with rabbits at all. So then I cried a lot. Um, I considered giving up for like a day. Like there was like a day that I can remember where I was like, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do this. Like maybe I'm not meant to be a veterinarian. And I was with uh, my now husband at the time we were dating and he was basically like, uh, excuse you, no, not, not an option. And so then from then I was like, okay, changing something. I need to change something. So um, I applied to two different programs, um, both with the goal of getting into vet school. One of them was a certified veterinary technician program. 
may sound a little weird, but um, a lot, so the CVT programs, a lot of the classes, the didactic coursework is not quite the same as veterinary coursework, certainly, but it's similar. You learn about anesthesia, you learn about surgery, you learn about um, like endocrinology, like all that kind of stuff and disease processes. And so I thought that might be kind of a decent way to enhance my knowledge in those subjects, um, as well as it wasn't a backup plan, but it was kind of a, if I'm not gonna get into vet school right now, I can make more money <laughs> as a tech if I'm certified. Plus get a lot more like animal handling experience and stuff like that. So that was one of the programs I applied to. Um, the other program was a master's program and it was actually a master of public health program. And I will forever be grateful to um, one of the doctors that I worked for at the time who actually suggested that program to me. I never thought about doing public health, um, but UF, the vet school that I'm at, actually has a combined DVM MPH, Master of Public Health degree. And so the logic is like, they clearly like veterinarians who have a public health degree. So why not just get the public health degree before the DVM? And so I applied to that. Um, and luckily I got into both programs I um, was very excited about that because I had been getting nothing but rejection for the past two years. Um, and so a lot of back and forth, a lot of like unsureness, um, but I ultimately decided to do the master's program. It was a two year program. Um, I am so grateful <laughs> that I did the master's program. Um, I also got a job as an equine technician uh, through the master's program, weirdly enough, and uh, worked there weekends during the master's program and then when I graduated worked there full-time for a little while ironically <laughs> my uh or maybe not ironically my job as an equine vet tech showed me that I don't want to just be an equine veterinarian I still want to treat horses but um I want to do mixed animal medicine now in my second year of the program before I graduated applied to vet school again um this time I think I again applied to two or three vet schools um, I was waitlisted for an interview at Kansas and I got an interview at UF. I did a lot of interview prep. I like read the questions they were going to ask. Um, so there's a website, I'll say this here, I'll post it um, down below too. There's a website called Student Doctor Network where people uh, can post their experiences at different doctoral programs, both the application process experiences, as well as their experiences at the actual schools. And so they actually will post about um, what the interview was like, and they, they'll say what questions they were asked and stuff like that. There's obviously no guarantee you're going to get the same questions, but it's a good way of getting an idea of what schools are like, what types of interviews you're going to get, all that. So I really prepared for it. I like practiced my answers. Um, I was like very like studied for the interview. And so went in, did the interview. It was awkward as hell. Um, combination, I think, of my fault and the interviewer's fault. Um, we just didn't like click. I think great. I walked out of the interview like, oh, I don't know how that went. I didn't get it. Um, so that sucked. <laughs> and so then I took all of that and I was like what do I do like I got an interview that's a big step um, but what what do I do what can I change and so I did something I should have done in the beginning but I didn't really know it was an option I talked to the pre-vet advisor at UF um, she's a great person her name's Alex Avellino good friends with her now um, highly recommend you talk to her and she actually did um, an application review with me and she was actually able to review with me some of what the interviewers thought and some of what they thought of my you know my application and my interview and everything like that um, I did a lot of introspection I ended up leaving the equine clinic job because um, they I wasn't being respected as much as I should have been as a technician um, ended up becoming head tech at um, a small animal veterinary clinic and got a lot more like leadership experience doing that. Um, and I started working on my application early. That's a huge tip. Um, I am such a procrastinator. It's so bad. A lifelong battle probably will be 
for the rest of my life, but please work on your application early if you can. Um, work, work to my application early and like for my essays, I didn't make myself be concise other than to fit in the word limits. Um, I just said what I felt and said what was true for me and didn't worry about what I needed to say, what I, what I felt like they wanted to hear. And then that held true for the interview as well. I like rehearsed a little bit. I like did mock interviews and stuff with um, my husband, but I, I remember there was like a, a certain interview question where like he, you know, he mock asked me the question and I answered it and it was a long answer. It was like a three part answer. And he kind of said, you probably want to shorten that answer. Like, I, you know, think about that again. You might want to shorten it. It's a really long answer. And I sort of took it, you know, took a couple hours and I thought about it and I like wrote things down and I was, I came back and I was like, no, like the three part answer, like that's what I want. Like that's, it was basically what my, what I want my future in vet med to be. And I was like, I can't shorten this. Like I tried to make it a little bit more concise, but I, I was like, I have to have all three parts in there. Like that's what I want. And yeah. And then I went to the interview. Um, I got an interview for the last time, uh, spoiler alert again. <laughs> and I was just purely honest about my flaws, about my good points. Um, and the interview was not awkward at all. We all laughed the whole time. Um, and I, you know, I told stories. I like brought up like dealing with difficult clients and kind of opened myself up to, okay, cool. Here's a difficult client situation. She, you know, tell us how you would deal with that. And I answered it because of course I can deal with difficult clients. I was a head technician. Like I knew that I had learned those leadership skills and I was proud of them. I was proud of myself. I was proud of who I had become. Um, and I think the first, at least two times, maybe the third time too, that I applied to vet school, I wasn't proud of myself. Like I didn't, I, I didn't necessarily feel like I deserved to get into vet school. So why the hell were they going to let me in? Um, but that fourth time I, yeah, I walked out of the interview room like, got this, like I, I got in. Um, now, uh, quickly, cause um, my thing is starting soon. I got waitlisted, which sucked. Freaking punch in the gut that I got waitlisted, but got in off the waitlist. So now I'm a third year vet student, which is insane. Um, but yeah, that's hopefully the short-ish version of my journey to vet school. Um, drop comments uh, down below if you have questions. Um, I can explain more about the story in another video. Okay, all right, thanks.